Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio with K0PIR and my YouTube channel. I've got a video coming up on JTDX and I'll show you the settings that I have in it for my ICOM 7610. I'll also show you a few tips that keep the Raspberry Pi running smoothly. Okay, we're over at the computer and in my, as in my previous video, I have DX Keeper running. Now this is running on my Windows 10 computer. I have Log Publisher running and that's on my Windows 10 computer. And my Raspberry Pi 3, I'm using VNC Viewer. And I like this way, uh, it's set up nice. I can see when I log stations, it goes right into my logbook. Now, of course, another way to do it is I could use this as full screen and do it that way. And that looks pretty nice. But I prefer to have it set up so I can see my logbook. Now, another person asked why on my radio, why I was using AGC set to fast and not off. And I just prefer it that way. And now the optimum setting would be, or the optimal setting would be AGC set to off. But if I do that, I have to be pretty careful. Every once in a while, a station will come in and just blow me out. So I have to be careful when I set it to off. Okay, let's take a look at the settings. And on my website, www.k0pir.us, I'll have screen captures of all this that I go through. You'll see it on the wide graph. You can get a close-up and see how I have my settings on my wide graph. And then when we go into File and Settings, I'll open up the General tab. I'll have a screen capture of this. These are pretty self-explanatory. I think most of this stuff is the default. I'm displaying the distance in miles. I don't think that was checked. And of course, I had to put my call sign and grid in there. Let's go over to the radio. Now I'm using the ICOM 7610 and I have a USB cable between it and the Raspberry Pi. There's no need for a sound card or a signal link USB. The 7610 and the USB cable and then the Raspberry Pi. If you're using a 7300, it would be the same way. Now if you're not familiar with Linux or the Raspberry Pi, then this may look a little unfamiliar to you, but basically when you plug in the cable, it'll show up. And it's USB 0 on mine. So device, TTY, and then USB 0. Underneath the baud rate, the baud rate is set to 115.2 in the radio. And I have a page on the ICOM 7610 and the ICOM 7300. It's on my website. And it goes through all the screen captures in the radio, going through the menu. So you can have a look at that if you're confused about how to set up your ICOM radio. Now this, I believe, is all the default except for RTS. I had to set it to low, otherwise it wouldn't work. I believe it would just keyed up, or I had trouble with it. So I set RTS to low. And again, this kind of goes along with the internal settings of the 7610 and the 7300. And you'll have to look at my website to see how that's set up. In uh, Push to Talk, it's uh, Cat. Down here for Mode, it's Data Packet. And down here for Rig or Split Operation, I use the Rig. And I like to use the Rig on the 7610. On the 7300, I usually use Fake It. Now, if I hit Test Cat, it should turn green. Test Push to Talk, it'll turn red. It doesn't put out any power. I believe uh, this is the default. Let's go over to the Audio tab. And again, if you're not familiar with Linux, this is going to look a little odd to you, but it, we're looking for the codec, and it's the system default. On mine, it just came up as the system default, and you'll have a few different options in there, but mine just came up as the system default. The rest of this is default settings. Sequencing, I changed this a little bit. And again, I'll have a, a screen capture of these on my website. You can take a closer look. Transmit macros, I haven't changed anything in there yet. Reporting, I did turn this on down here. Uh, the UDP server, and I was using 
I was going to use JT Alert on my Windows 10 computer, but I haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, I, for the logbook, DX Keeper, I did have to enable this. And uh, this is the correct port. I had to put in the right TCP IP address or the IP address for my Windows 10 computer. And it works flawlessly. Works perfect. I also enabled PSK Reporter. Let's go over to Frequencies. And under Frequencies, I don't think I, I didn't do anything in there. Notifications. Uh, I may have changed a few in here. I may have changed the color on this. But you can go in and, and fix that the way that you want it. Filters. I did check off uh, Show CQ Messages Only because on the Raspberry Pi 3, I don't want this thing to hang up with a bunch of bunch of calls over here on the left hand side. And I'm just really interested in the CQ messages anyway. Go over one more tab. Uh, scheduler, I don't have anything in there. And then finally the advanced tab. And I'm pretty sure I left all this the same. With the exception of the top decoding frequency, I made it 3100. My radios are set up for 3.6K in bandwidth. Okay, let's go ahead and close this out. And to keep the Raspberry Pi running smooth, I'm just using, I just want to view the CQ calls. Another thing that I, I went to was in the auto sequencing. Um, go down to auto RX frequency filter and I enabled that. And it tells me in the manual for D JTDX to enable that on CPUs that are slow or computers that are slow. So this seems to help when I'm starting to make a, a QSO or contact, I'll see a bracket, a purple bracket show up. And I believe it's just decoding in that area. Now something else uh, is under decode and I've been playing around with this a little bit. I've got it set to auto right now, but I've tried one, two, three, and five and six and on. Uh, FT8 decoding on the wideband, I have it set to fast, and the narrow right now I have set to deep, and it seems to be working really well. So if we want to take a look at this uh, right-hand side, I've got it pretty much set up the way that I do on my Windows 10 computer with the exception of, uh, of SWL mode, and that gives a little bit extra decoding. It slows things down, I think, so I'm leaving that Un, it's not enabled right now. I'm leaving that the way it is. And then the filter, when I hover over, it'll tell you what it does. And I don't have that activated right now. Uh, over on the right-hand side, I'm just going one QSO at a time. And uh, auto sequencing is set to three. Uh, I believe the default is two. But you can set the auto sequencing over here. And that's what I have called based on end of decoding. Uh, and I think this speeds things up. This speeds it up for the Raspberry Pi. So there you go. And the power slider, you know, I've got it set up here. I adjust my power using the multi knob on the radios. Uh, I've been putting out about 40 watts. Let's jump over to 20 meters and I'll make a contact. Okay, I'm over on 20 meters. And you can see there are a lot of stations. I'm going to look for a CQ out here. I've got locked set. Transmit and receive is locked. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, there's a uh, Germany. And I'm putting out 40 watts. My ALC is up to about a quarter of the ALC scale on the 7610. SWR is low. I'm using a two-element tri-bander. But it's only up about 25 feet. So... You know, maybe I'll get this Germany, but we'll see. You can see the uh, purple bracket up here, and that is there because of the auto sequencing. Let me go up here. Because the auto RX frequency filter, that must be the filter. Because it's showing up right now. Let's see who shows up over here. Down here, FT8. 51 contacts on FT8 since I've been using it.
I'm going to go ahead and halt that. I'm double clicking on it. KE400I. Okay, got a contact. He was giving me a signal report back. I've got my sound adjusted. It goes between 30 and 50, and that's good on JTDX. And I adjusted this with the sound setting the in the ICOM 7610. All right, so there he is, 40 watts. I've got the comments in there. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. He gets logged over here. And then in a few seconds, it'll show that it's uploaded to qrz.com and to hrdlog.net. Now, if I want the name to appear in there, I have to select it, go to CBA, this is in DX Keeper, and then click Save. His name is Alan. Okay, well, I've been having a lot of fun with this. I think this is just a neat project. If you're not familiar with the Raspberry Pi 3, it is a lot of fun. It's pretty inexpensive to get and to start using. So, if you have some extra time and you want to play around with it, Boy, it's, it's worth it to me. I hope you find this informative and useful. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Also, tell your friends. 73 and good DX. Hey guys, if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button below. And if you want to be notified when I put out a new video, ring that bell.